yes. Right. Um, and then also, the other component that we discuss at length here is the so-called sine, sine extension and sine extent. Um, and, and, and in the past, we've, we've actually made mention of the fact that this is important because if you, if you remember the segmentation of the bits for an I format instruction, we said that the last 16 bits are reserved for the immediate value, right? Um, and and if, if that immediate value is going to be used as part of some computation, we know that it needs to be reconciled to the expected bit representation for a typical uh, MIPS data, right? Which is 32 bits. So the sign extension effectively converts the 16 bit value into equivalent 32 bits value, right? This is why you need that. So we'll discuss this at length. Um, and really, if you, if you look at these four components, right, we already know what, how the register files work. We already know how the ALU works, right? We already know how the memory works, right? Both the instruction memory and data memory, same concept, really. Um, but the question is, how exactly does this sign extension or sign extend hardware component actually work? It turns out it's quite simple, really, right? So what the sign ex ex extension or sign extend does is it takes in as input a 16-bit value and then it converts it into a 32-bit value, equivalent value. How does it do this? It gets the 16-bit representation of the immediate value and then uh, pads that value with 16 or prefixes 16, um, uh, 16 bits that are equivalent to the most, the most significant bit on the well, the most, the, uh, the, the, the last most significant bit, right? Least significant bit, most significant bit, right? So the way the sign extend works is you get the, the, uh, more, the, the bit that's, uh, uh, the most significant bit here, which is here, and then you use this to um, kind of like pad the value with 16 of those um, entities or entries, like in this case, you notice that we are padding uh, this value with 16 zeros so that we come up with 32 bits. And really, uh, if you were to convert this value to decimal and this value to decimal, you get the same answer. Right. So just a simple example here, just try and uh, kind of reinforce what we just uh, discussed here. Let's, uh, we're still using the same example here. So one of the very first instructions was we are loading the value 50 into register eight. This is standard practice. Um, we know how to decode this, it's pretty easy here. But, but you notice that um, as this instruction is fetched, obviously the immediate value is going to be found out to this particular uh, section of the data path, right? The 16 bits. So the 16 bits are fed into the sign extension and sign extend as input, right? Of course, this is not the actual decimal value, it has to be um, the binary equivalent of the value you're working with, right? in this case 50. Um, and then once it, uh, it's processed by the sign extend, you end up with um, this 32 bits. Makes sense why this is the case, because for instructions like the add i, you know that this value is potentially going to have to be maybe added somewhere, right? And in fact, if you remember, this particular example, add i dollar sign eight zero fifty is part of this monitor program here. So in fact, the value in eight is going to be used in this computation here, the add dollar sign ten comma eight comma nine. This needs to be thirty two bits in size, right? Because it's it's going to be in this particular case, it's going to be fed into the ALU as an operand to the ALU. Right? It has to be thirty two bits in size. Um, Hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> so you come up with that. <clears throat> and, and, and I just wanted to mention something here. Uh, a reminder actually, that, that uh, at some stage we made, we made mention of the fact that MIPS actually represents data using two's complement. So in fact, the, the binary equivalent numbers we're talking about here are represented using two's complement. So if you're dealing with numbers, um, all, all those numbers are encoded using two's complement. And we know the process of converting a number to two's complement, right? But let's just have a revision. But, so you notice here, if, if this value though was negative 50 instead of positive 50 here, um, what we'd have to do here is we go through the same process. The negative 50 is going to be found out here, but obviously negative 50 needs to be represented using 16-bit um, uh, representation, 
in two's complement, which this is negative 50 in two's complement. Same process, right? Convert the 50 into decimal, right? So you, con you convert the 50 into decimal, um, and then you flip the bits. After you flip the bits, you add one. Once you add one, once you go through that process, you shall end up with this value here. Like the two, a two's complement representation of negative 50. Um, but once this is passed to the sine extend component, uh, the right, the most significant bit is used to, um, to provide values for, 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 for the remaining 16 bits here. Which is why, ladies and gentlemen, or oh, guys, which is why we see this when we, are, when we are doing these things, if we are to load this instruction, same exact instruction, right? Um, zero, negative 50. And I'll save this, uh, I'll call this sign extend, I guess. Observe, if I, and I, I think we've gone through this already, but for the benefit of those that have forgotten about this, if, if we load this in, in, in MIPS, I'll call it, uh, in QTSPIM, Sorry. Let it burn. So uh, we, are, we are wanting to load the negative 15 to the register eight, right? If we execute this, ignore that, we have negative 50 quite right, but what the computer sees is um, in register eight, this value here, right? So I don't know if people can see this, right? The, 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 the two's complement representation of, of negative 50 once it passes through the sign extend, 32 bits, right? Uh, and this can be a bit tricky because when you're dealing with integer values, right? If, so if you, you, if you decided to include the other part here, uh, the positive 50, you won't, because of how QTSPIM is implemented, you will not see the, uh, that's silly, you will not see the, you will not see all the 32 bits. Do you understand what I mean, this thing? Right, so don't be misled when you're, when you're, when you're trying these things out and, and you're like, oh, but this guy was telling us, oh, here's his 16-bit representation. Uh, why is it that this thing is not being represented using 32 bits? The reason is simple, because the leading zeros are more or less like irrelevant, right? We had a discussion about this. So when you're computing some, some, some binary numbers and the answer is, oh, I found the answer that's uh, zero, zero, using eight bit representation, one, zero, zero. This, this is literally the same as, as this. Because the leading zeros have have no influence on the value itself, the magnitude of the number. Do you understand this? The leading ones, though, are important. Hmm? The leading ones are important, though. Think about this for not the leading zeros. Okay. Go and uh, try and convert. I know how to do this. I was going to say, go and try and convert this back to, I guess, go home, get this value, which is negative 50, using 32 bit representation, convert it into decimal from binary, right? Bearing in mind that this is uh, using two's complement. We know the process is steps we follow. And then convert the equivalent. Um, 16-bit representation of the number. 